First, let me start by saying uh, great, great work. Uh, one of the things I, I think that is, there's so much technically in this movie to unpack between the high frame rate, the what you guys did with Will Smith's performance. You guys have worked on a number of movies. Was this like the number one challenge that you've ever had? It was it was pretty hard you know, doing it. Uh, like the whole reason that uh, since I started visual effects 25 years ago, we've looked into trying to make digital people, and we are just all innately experts at the nuance that you know if anything is even slightly wrong, we look at it and say this this is something creepy about it, and this is not real. So we had to do pull that off, and it's at 120. There is no hiding. It is just in your face, and you see every single detail, and and uh, that all has to work. We call it like a symphony of uh, of different aspects that have to be all right for you to believe that what you're seeing is a real person, and it's really Will Smith. This was challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one of the things, uh, uh, what were I, I wrote this one down? What were the surprises, like challenges, that you uh, weren't that you hadn't foreseen in prep? that hit you on set or in post? So one of the things that uh, going into the film, right at the beginning, before before even prep starts, when you have the conversation, can you do a digital human? Um, we have this preconceived, you know, you, you think about it for a while and you make up this roadmap in your head of what's gonna uh, happen over time. And you have sort of the challenges that you think you're gonna be faced with. Um, we were blown away by the fact that we were wrong, right? You know, but how wrong we were. We thought that creating a digital human would be the hardest challenge, that making something believable as a breathing, living, organic creature in frame was gonna be the biggest single thing that we'd have to overcome. Um, we, you know, treated with a, we, as far as performance and likeness to will, we knew those would be hard, but we, we you know, that was kind of our wheelhouse. We'd done that before, you know, uh, so we, we felt relatively confident in that. Once we started going forward and getting into the shots, we rapidly reached a point where we had a believable breathing human being on frame. Um, when I say rapidly, I mean six months, seven months later. But uh, what surprised us was the razor's edge, and I keep using that term a lot, I'm sorry. But the razor's edge of, if you get even just one micron wrong, it falls off of being Will Smith, right? And uh, performance is not, you know, likeness isn't just, a single frame of Will Smith looking like Will Smith, every single pose, the way he blinks, the way he smiles, the way he travels his lips up into a smile, if any part of that travel is ever so slightly wrong, the human brain, which is totally attuned to recognize in a person's face, uh, throws a flag and says, I still believe it being a living thing, but I just don't know if that's Will. Um, you know, that, what some of the early comments we received were, it looks, I, I totally believe that it's a, a human that I've filmed on camera. It just looks like Will's cousin. One of the things we didn't expect, we were working on a bunch of shots and uh, uh, he, we, we dialed it all in and we're looking at it and said, yeah, something's just not Will enough. And we started to realize that what we're used to, the canonical Will, he had a bon vivant. He had a, a, this light hearted character in, in all the films. And we're looking at these shots and Junior's not. Junior's a very brooding character. And until we, we found a couple scenes from Bad Boys and that where he was scowling and we put it up next to our character and realized that we actually had nailed it exactly. We just weren't used to seeing Will Smith act this way. So it, it's kind of fun that we could now see Will Smith at 23 playing a different role that we're used to. I'm, I'm curious, the, you, there's scenes in this in the day, there's scenes in this at night. Were you always secretly hoping that you were, like the movie was gonna take place more at night or did it matter? No, I don't think so. I think the, the you know, it's, it, all, it comes down to um, the getting the, the science of what light's doing to the face right. Uh, it should respond properly in, in all different lighting environments. Um, you're, even though we say night, night doesn't really hide stuff. Movie night is never really that dark, and you're seeing a lot of detail even in the dark shots. Absolutely. The way to think of it is that when you do a night scene, you don't tell your actor that he can take a break on, on right. performance, right? right? You know, he still has to give a great performance even when the cameras are, you know, rolling on a dark scene. So the same occurs with the CG. We, we assumed that every shot was the worst case scenario. Every shot had to be dealt with as if it was the most damning shot that we had to do. In fact, one of the, the, the shot that, the first shot that I saw that they had delivered that really looked perfect that I, I didn't see a single flaw was a day scene when he's in the Gemini training center and they're they're, they're looking over at uh, soldiers with fighting. the ice cream with the ice cream they're, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's the full on in, in direct light and and uh, just completely bought it so it's a uh, uh, it is a testament that uh, what a that a deep dive to study how you know with digital humans uh, 
the technology had gotten to a point where the difference between looking like uh, reality and looking like just a decent CGI thing was almost subconscious. Uh, and to get the rest of the way there was studying just the most tiny nuances of, of how light bounces through the skin, how the different layers of, uh, of uh, enamel you have on your teeth and, and how light behaves. Because even as artists, we couldn't point to it and say, oh, look at that, that's wrong. It's We needed the computer to do the right thing, just like a DP when he's filming someone doesn't know exactly what the light's doing in their face. They he they lights up the lines up the scene with the proper lighting to make it look pretty, and then nature does its thing. We're at that point where the computers have to do that for us as well. Well, one of the things is that in my looking at it from the outside, you guys did a ton of R and D to bring this thing to life, and I would imagine that this movie essentially paid for this ability in the future to now take this technology and amplify it. Mm. What is there something that you sort of are looking forward to to be able to add to this technology for the future? Like, whether, whether it be the software doing more of the work so the human doesn't have to move certain switches, or could you sort of talk about that? Uh, one of the main things, I mean, you know, moving forward, what would be great to do is to have a better understanding of how the face works. And what I mean by that is how muscles interact with fascia, interact with skin, and, you know, uh, moves your face around. Um, a lot of effort is spent trying to get every pose of the face exactly right. And it's not just a smile is a smile, it's a smile is that specific person's version of a smile. Because like I said, you you can be off in the most subtle of ways, and it's not like the corner has to be up here, the corner would be just a half a millimeter too deep and all of a sudden it looks wrong. So having a better understanding of all that kind of stuff and being able to arrive at that result faster would mean that we could do this more readily on more occasions. One of the challenges too will be, um, you know, we had the advantage of having Will Smith play Will Smith, and you know, there's no better um, imitator of Will Smith than himself. So the the movement and the performance that we were getting fit perfectly for the model that we were using. If you were to do something else, like have a different actor drive something, that that has another unique set of challenges of how to make um, the same issue that even the best imitators, uh, you know, doing an impersonation, they're that's great, but you can still tell a slight difference. If, if we're trying to close that gap to you know perfection, that's that's something we have to figure out. Completely. I already have to go. I mean it sincerely. Your work is incredible. Uh, uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you. <laughs>